Hey Truths, this is your sister Truth Seeker 5000, BKA Evangelist Donnie B. Anderson, getting on here to check on you all who actually finished watching the series of uh, Preachers of Detroit. Uh, I want to chat with you all just to see what your thoughts were about the series. You know, so this won't be a regular review, just a chat. As you all know, I stopped reviewing the series after watching the second episode, but I still supported and watched my favorite reviewers' reviews on the show because I just really love their personalities and views on things. Uh, have you guys ever just not watched a show but watched a reviewer just tell the tale from uh, their own book of their mind and opinion and found it more interesting than the actual show? <laughs> some people you really do enjoy hearing from because they keep it real so I have a few of those reviewers that I love to watch so I am abreast to what's been going on uh, some truths actually asked me to speak on the finale so I'm here to do that um, I saw the finale episode and it looked like the whole series was fashioned to be about Corletta Vaughn's geriatric hospital drama, like The Guiding Light or something show. <laughs> Just really. General Hospital. In the book of my mind, they didn't give much from Dorinda Clark Cole. Uh, Bishop Ellis and Clarence Lathan gave y'all church pimp realness. No real substance came from any of them, uh, actually. I saw... David Bullock, he got some humility in him. He got humbled in this season by uh, after Corletta Vaughn lied to, snubbed, and embarrassed him on national TV, causing him to lose the city council seat for lack of her promised support. Uh, he learned that in order to get that seat, he has to play their game. Okay, they are all a part of an ungodly clique. So, that actually gave him something to think about in this season. Uh, Corletta Vaughn is wicked. She is a Jezebel pit bull spirit uh, that's just within her. Until she gets delivered from that, she will never be properly used by God. Nor would her marriage be healthy. There's something to be said when... A spouse is totally happy, not sleeping in another room away from you, but in a whole nother state away from you. I truly feel sorry for Gil, her husband. You know, also, I'm going to need for Pastor Don Shelby to ask or borrow seven seats and sit in them all for trying to preach a gospel of his own wife, Corletta Vaughn, to him. Okay, uh, he looked like a fool. And Gim got, Gil got him together. He told him, you can't come in here after knowing her all of five minutes and try to do a sermon on the mount to me about her. So get your life. <laughs> I paraphrased a little bit, but that was the real life that Gil was giving us in that conversation. Uh, Don Shelby need to worry about not fake speaking in tongues and putting on a preaching show for the cameras. Worry about that. Also worry about how he's going to help his children get delivered from the belly of the beast of which he ushered them down by being uh, Joe Jackson and them into this ungodly wide path of destruction called the industry. Those children, if they stay together, they're going to take the Baphomet oath to Satan if they haven't already done it for fame yet. You're going to see a change in their whole look and in their music style. That's going to change into the secular realm of taste. Like Erica Campbell, they're going to be making trap gospel music to appeal to the flesh of the ungodly. And that's the actual perfect name for that kind of music because that's just what it is. It's a trap. Many people are going to backslide and fall away from God and Christ Jesus because of it. But such is the plan of the enemy. And I'm just letting you know I'm not here for none of it. But that's it. Basically, I I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Oh, yeah. 
Pastor Timothy White Chocolate with Almonds Alden. Well, apparently I'm not the only one who forgot about him. Clearly, Oxygen, the producers of the show, forgot about him this whole season as well. Uh, we actually saw more of him in the episodes of Preachers of L.A. Uh, with the little cameo that he did there than we did in the whole series of what was supposed to be his own show. You know, he preached in one of his sermons that I heard how the producers kept asking him to be on the show and how he kept turning them down to to they to only be used uh, to only have him say yes finally and for him to be used as the white rabbit like I told y'all they made him look innocent, pure, weak and picked upon by the big bad bullock. And they made a fool out of him. The cast members did not respect him. When they greeted him, if you noticed, they would all rub his head like a puppy dog and shake him like a rag doll. And in the finale, they didn't even include him in the, in the show scene. You had to see him in a commercial. So I guess if you went to the bathroom, you missed him. You know, if they ask him to come back for another season if they have one and I pray that they do not <laughs> uh, then he's a fool I pray he gets a revelation from the Lord as well because as I previously said his ministry has no substance he picked one sin to preach and speak against and ran with it all over the country staying a virgin is not the real gospel a real gospel ministry and it will not help save and get anyone into heaven only the true gospel of Jesus Christ's message of his death, burial, resurrection, and true repentance of turning away from all sin, believing in Jesus, getting baptized, and doing his will according to the Bible is going to save souls. That's the real gospel Jesus told us to go all around the world preaching. That's like me saying, uh, the Bible says that lying is a sin. So I'm going all over the country preaching and teaching people that they need to tell the truth and shame the devil. And I'm going to get a t-shirt with that catchy little phrase on it and sell it along with my sermons on eBay for 5 to $15. I, I actually would give Coletta Vaughn one for free because the camera caught her up in, in her life to Pastor Bullock so strong and so bad that it wasn't even funny and she never apologized she just guilted and manipulated Pastor Bullock you, I almost felt bad for him but anyway who's getting saved from all of that no one you know my whole point and question to this foolery called a preacher show is where's the fruit and oil did anyone get saved did you learn anything other than how to manipulate lie backbite pimp the gospel polls play church and act dramatic and extra for a camera scene this show did absolutely nothing for the edification of the church it made us look so badly divided and out of order more people fell away and or fell more comfortably in their sins uh, upon that snowball slope on their way to hell than anyone got saved. The show and those alike is nothing more than the devil's agenda to discredit the church and the real power of Jesus Christ's ministry within each and every one of us who are believers. Oh, but trust you me, beloveds. There is still a remnant of saints who have not bowed a knee to ball or sold their souls to the devil. I know because I'm a general in that remnant army and I encourage all true saints to gird up your loins and get into the battle with prayer, holy living, and righteous works as the word says, serving and loving our Lord with all of your minds, hearts, souls, and strength. Do not get discouraged, distraught, or deterred by this foolery. The devil ain't got no new tricks, beloved. People are dropping into hell daily and by the second. 
the Bible says that hell enlarges itself to meet the masses. So don't let them trick you out of your crown and eternal opportunity at life with Jesus Christ. We don't have much longer, beloveds. You see the signs. And for those of you who say, that's why I left the church. You need to stop saying you're a Christian then. Because you're not one. You're a sinner using a fallen church as a license excuse to fall totally and more comfortably into your sins. If this bit offended you, that's what's going on now with the wayward, some of these wayward churches, then you won't be able to handle real persecution and even deadly offense that is to come that Jesus said would come. The truth is you left God a long time ago when you decided to live how you wanted to live comfortably along with the ungodly masses because they accept anything. You like the world because they embrace all things ungodly. And that's what you want to do. Anything you want to do. You're over here defending sexual perversion, homosexuality, and all other manners of sin in the name of living free. But I'll leave you with this. You out here still claiming to be a Christian, still lying, committing fortification, adultery, and co-signing foolery. You, your friends with ungodly people of the world. Those are your role models and the people that you look up to. Which according to the Bible in James 4 and 4, you being friends with the world and defending the world that makes you an enemy of God. You are doing just as much damage as the so-called wicked church that you so-called left. If you have separated from an ungodly church, go praise Jesus Christ in the basement, a cave, a closet. Do what you got to do. You better do it God's way, though, seeking after him in everywhere in accordance with his word, which never contradicts or fails to guide us into his righteousness. You sound foolish continuing to use that excuse. Jesus said, be hot or cold. There's no in between. There's no middle ground with sin. If you're watching this, then you have been warned and I urge you to repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And for those of you yet holding on, keep your head up in worship of our Lord. He's worthy and keep holding on. All right. For those of you who have stumbled, get back up, repent and get in line. That's all. You can do this, not on your own, but with the help of the Holy Spirit. All right. I'm going to keep you guys lifted up in prayer. Please do the same for me. I'll see you all in the comment section. Blessings to you all.